Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is going to be a general reading for North Node, South Node, and Scorpio, Taurus. So if you have your North Node and either Scorpio or Taurus, this reading is for you. Again, just take what resonates and leave the rest. For those of you who are current subscribers, welcome back. Thank you so much for sharing your energy with me. And for those of you who are new and just stopping by, thank you. Uh, my name is Karen Michelle Yearwood. I'm an intuitive guidance counselor and I help people like yourself along the Ascension journey. So a little reminder or a brief info blurb on the nodes. It's an aspect in our natal charts. I do read according to Western astrology and I use the whole house system of reading. So the nodes indicate, well, particularly the North Node indicates our Dharma, the work we're here to do in this human experience, the lessons we're here to learn. Um, it could include some obstacles and challenges. However, the South Node is um, really our gifts and talents that we bring over, bring over from past lives. It's what we do innately well. So um, again, this reading is um, for uh, whichever way it is in your chart. So if you have North Node in Scorpio or North Node in Taurus, the south node is always the sign opposite to that. So, you know, if your north node is in Taurus, then south node is in Scorpio and vice versa. The reading is not health specific, so just apply these energies to how they relate to your life as best as possible. Um, let me know in the comments how it's shaping up because you, Taurus, Scorpio, are the star of the show right now as it relates to the nodal transits. Um, the nodes are transiting Scorpio and Taurus. They will be until spring of next year. Um, they're squaring uh, Saturn in Aquarius and um, Sun in Leo. Not exact squares, right? Not by degree, but you know, because you are fixed signs, you are making aspects to the other two fixed signs, which is Leo and Aquarius. So again, look at your chart. What houses do they occupy? Are there any personal planets that make um, tight aspects to your nodes? Do you have like sun conjunct your south node or, you know, maybe your mercury opposing south node, something like that, because that's also going to um, give you some more insight into how these energies unfold in your life. So let's get started. I'm using my astrology reading cards to get some overall energies. We'll do a three card spread with tarot and wrap up with a few more oracles. So what do we have? We have the fifth house. The fifth house, this is the house of Leo. The sun is still in Leo. We'll be there until next week on the 22nd. I'm recording this on, I think today's 17th. <laughs> yeah, almost forgot. Yeah, so some of you could have your nodes in the fifth house or one of your nodes, or you could have um, just strong fifth house placements. Um, oh, the sun, more Leo energy. Wow, look at this. Yeah, so some of you do have strong Leo. Or this just could just you know just be the the current um sun transit right sun and leo or your sun could be making a positive aspect to your nodes like i mentioned or you could have sun in the fifth house maybe um and pluto there we go and pluto is the modern ruler of scorpio the traditional ruler is mars pluto is currently transiting in capricorn um i think he is still retrograde i have to double check but um he will be moving into Aquarius next year and then briefly retrograde back into Aquarius, I mean, into a Capricorn and then officially be in Aquarius beginning in 2024. But, um, oh, before I do that, <laughs> bottom of the deck, Jupiter. Jupiter, the great benefic. So Jupiter could be making a strong aspect to some of your nodes as well. Jupiter, I believe, is in Taurus or he will be transiting into Taurus soon out of um, Aries. So the fifth house, the sun and Pluto, this is really telling me, you know, that sun Pluto is really speaking to me in terms of like um, transforming the ego, but you could be doing it by a means of creativity and um, playfulness or, you know, romance, um, you know, in terms of like really embodying a sense of like being in the moment. Um, and especially with Jupiter here at the bottom of the deck, you know, that benefic energy of like believing in the possibilities kind of, you know, um, you know, going the distance, but not being too, you know, married to outcomes. This is really great energy. You know, Pluto sometimes scares people because, you know, it represents like endings and death and, um, you know, dramatic changes. But I think this is just really an embrace of like who you're becoming. Um, who you're evolving it, it's total acceptance as well i think you all are having like this childlike perspective on you know being lifelong learners and embracing change and embracing not knowing everything in the moment so this is gorgeous energy i love this Taurus scorpio um again let me know in the comments how this is um coming out for you now the overall um i, I 
I was going to say message, but not message, but the overall like meaning of North Node and Taurus is really finding value, right? Really finding stability and, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, stability and security and whatever it is you're investing in. That's the Taurian energy. Taurus rules the, um, is the natural ruler of the second house. So that's our money, our assets, you know, how we make our money, our possessive possessions are tangible assets it's also a feeling of self-worth so it's how we show up in order to bring about um you know the tangible resources and it's an earth sign it's venus ruled so also about um, abundance and harmony and having an enough having this really um you know lofty comfortable place where we are situated and that could literally be your home or like within yourself scorpio is um again ruled by mars and pluto so it's more about the inner being um the, the more inner ways of um us evolving on a soul level on a conscious level it also is the natural ruler of the eighth house so it could be about um money other people's money right other people's investments like taxes governmental things um inheritance inheritances i was trip over that word but yeah inheriting things um and then of course like i said death evolution endings and beginnings so south note sitting there is really maybe challenging people to look at how that has played out in your life and has put you in a position where you were not uh acknowledging or using your value to the best of your ability, right? And that's gonna play out in many different ways for many different people. It just depends on, again, what is, um, what houses your nodes are in and then what else it is aspecting, okay? But I just wanted to say that because of that sun Pluto, it could be, you know, the reason why you are just kind of radically accepting things is because you want the stability, you want love and abundance, beauty, comfort, um, more financial resources. But again, the way you're going about it is through those fifth house activities, which is creativity, you know, being in this childlike energy and kind of going with the flow, which is very beautiful and very, um, <clears throat> very like uh, well ex accepted or not accepted, but you know, it's well um, positioned with this time of the year because the sun is in Leo. Like the energy of the cosmos welcomes that. Okay, so let's get your three card spread. The first position I'm looking at is um, dreams. The shadow is you too. So I just got done talking about Scorpio and here's some Scorpio energy, um, shadow work. But in the dream position, it's not necessarily literally literal dreams it could be what you know you want to call in what your desires are what you've been trying to manifest and so <coughs> excuse me we do have pluto here so this could be you know some shadow work you're doing um or some events in your life that are playing out that are leading you to do some shadow work and to look at um the dark side of yourself you know we all have it and all signs have light side shadow um, yeah light side and a shadow side so um, what habits or you know behavior patterns have been pretty um, consistent in your life and that are you know challenging you in terms of bringing about a sense of abundance and stability in your life um, let's get one more I want to get a clarifier for that oh we well, never never mind at the bottom of the deck is rebirth which is the death energy it's 13 and that um, 13 is the the death card in the tarot the major arcanas rebirth here and so there's more scorpio energy right there at the bottom of the deck and so that's the south node where the south node is transiting again for you you might have your north node there either way the energy is really ping pong back and forth so um just take it how it resonates but again there's some type of transformation happening here you could also be living kind of vicariously through others um if you have children of your own you could be really um you know embodying and and enjoying what they are going through and how they're developing um if you have adult children maybe you're just you know having this extreme sense of pride and you know finding solace and um the people they have become as adults if that resonates but if not if this is just you again it's embodying this like childlike spirit but also acknowledging the shadows within yourself and that's really leading you to this sense of like radical acceptance but then also opening up doors for more abundance to come in that maybe you indirectly blocked off before. I'm getting that intuitively for some of you. So that is interesting. Very beautiful energy though. Um, the second position is uh, current reality. So what does spirit want you to know about the current reality? The hanged man. 
the hanged man. This is, Pis this is Piscean energy, but it's surrender, right? It's self-actualization. It's also looking at things from another perspective. So looking at yourself from another perspective, um, going back to the patterns and the behaviors and the, you know, the routines that I just mentioned, like what has been keeping you stuck or, you know, what was maybe in your detriment before that you unconsciously were, um, you know, playing out. Sometimes that South Node energy can really be in, um, you know, it, it can play out or it can show up in our lives in patterns of codependency or patterns of self-abandonment, no matter where your South Node is. Um, because it is what we know innately well. And so because of that, we don't always think of it actively. We aren't consciously um, thinking about how those energies are playing out. It's just kind of second nature. So with this hangman energy in the current reality, it's like spirit is saying, you know, look at where you are right now. Um, and, you know, don't look at maybe the reality you had 20 years ago or 10 years ago, five years ago, whatever you know, whatever, however many years or months is relevant, like look at your current reality and look at it from the perspective of like um, how deep uh, evolution and changes can benefit you now um, and, and go forward. Um, it's like sometimes, especially with the nodes, you know, as, as far as how I understand them and, you know, I'm, you know, how they show up in different readings I've done for clients and just intuitively for myself as a reader, the nodes sometimes can trick us into, um, or any type of activate act to, excuse me, can't even talk any type of activation to our nodes, um, can bring up things of the past or like past realities. And it's like, it, it tricks us into believing like we are that person from that time period, right? It tricks us into thinking like, you know, maybe some hardships or things that we we did or decisions we made from the past are now like a part of who we are, but it's not. It was just like a part of a past. And I think with this hangman energy, spirit is inviting you to look at things more objectively. And again, look at your current reality in the sense of like what is like literally your current reality, North Node and Taurus, Earth sign, right? Grounded, rooted in reality and the tangible things, not what is, um, you know, from times past that maybe is bubbling up and um, tapping into your emotions, okay? Not to say you should avoid or ignore your emotions, but know that it isn't a, a physical reality. Something that happened five years ago or a decision you made five years ago was five years ago and now you're in the now. So that may resonate with some of you, a bit of a specific message, but that's why I was um, channeling with that hangman energy, especially with the sun, because the sun is our ego. Okay. And ego is flared up oftentimes with fears or with, you know, um, things like core shame. So the last position is what? Oh, I think it is fear. Okay. So yeah, we're doing dream, current reality, and fear. So what does spirit want you to know regarding some fears that you have or have had that maybe have kept you stuck? Fire. Fire. I'm going to get a clarifier for this. So this deck is really unique. It's by Holy Water. Her page is on Instagram. But it's consisted of, um, you know, like the standard tarot and uh, major arcanas, but then also oracles and like these really cool elemental cards. So fire, some of you could have strong fire in your chart. And then we have, ooh, we have single. Interesting. Fire and single. Maybe some of you are recently becoming single <coughs> and why, um, oh, well, the fifth house came out, but I was channeling, you know, some of you could be really finding um, a new sense of self through romance. So, you know, if you're single, maybe you're just dating, getting to know people, being a little bit, you know, passionate with the fire sign. That's a quick energy and that's usually um, known to be a non-committal energy. Um, so, but this is in the fear position, which is really interesting. Maybe some of you are fearful that you will be single forever or you don't like a sense of singleness. Maybe your security was once tied to relationships or being, um, <clears throat> seriously committed to someone and now that you are single that's making you feel a little bit insecure but I think it's a part of your evolution yeah bottom of the deck is the high priestess so your intuition is being activated here it's like you're you, you're more powerful than you think um sorry for the that there we go and 
Yeah, you're more powerful than you know. Oh, sorry for the weird focus. More powerful than you know. And this current time with the nodal transit, you could be um, just more engaged with your higher power. You know, more tapped in, more feeling things intuitively, more um, engaged with, uh, you know, just the things that are maybe a, more of that Scorpio energy, um, which is a water sign. But like I said in the intro, it is traditionally ruled by Mars. So it's like you're kind of tapped into fifth dimension, um, your intuition, channeling, um, doing any kind of like rituals, but then using that to take action, which is the Mars energy. Um, interesting, fire and single here. Uh, this is a new deck for me, so I'm still getting used to really um, using these with channeling. Um, but again, it's in the fear position, but there's something kind of like, you know how people say hurt so good? There's something kind of enjoyable about this fear. Like this fear is like motivating you to keep going. Or it's like you're playing with this sense of like the unknown. Yeah, it's scary, but like you like it like that. <laughs> um, and that could be the Scorpio energy. Scorpio can can be like that, right? Kind of um, just freakishly um, turned on or, you know, amused by things that are... Um, I don't want to say bad, but you know what I mean? Like it isn't necessarily welcomed by most people. Okay. No shade to Scorpio. I have Scorpio energy, you know, my Pluto is squaring my moon in my chart. So and I have Pluto and Scorpio. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do any more clarifiers. I think I'm going to leave it there. High Priestess at the bottom of the deck here. Um, really, really interesting Taurus Scorpio. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So let's wrap up with your oracles now which I think I was doing, um, oh, life purpose. Sorry, I, had, I was trying to remember what I was, what deck I had used for the final oracles. Yeah, these are the life purpose, another Doring Virtue deck, or a Doring, Doring Virtue deck. freedom you're free to do what you choose yeah and i think many of you are not realizing that you know with the jupiter energy and you know the sun here with the fifth house yeah i think maybe many of you were um you know previously maybe before the nodes transited into your nodal sign that um you know you were kind of like fixed on what's right versus wrong or like what's expected of you but this you know with this sense of freedom it's like really embodying who you are or you know leaning into finding out who you are career change yeah so you're embarking upon a new career that brings you the joy and abundance you desire and deserve absolutely you know fifth house is opposing um the 11th house which is um, not necessarily career, that's more so the 10th house, but I think the 11th house can sometimes be obviously connected, all the houses are connected, but um, 11th house is our partnerships and our alliances and it's tied to the bigger community. So there could be some type of um, connections through groups that's gonna bring you to a new career change is, is what I'm trying to say. And sensitivity, there's a Scorpio energy. You're becoming more sensitive and need to make changes accordingly like that and bottom of the deck is energy healing your natural energy healing abilities are an important part of your life purpose there we go so i'm gonna leave it here scorpio taurus let me know in the comments how this is shaping up for you um what other aspects you have in your chart um if it resonates please like the video even just a part of it if this is your kind of thing and you haven't already please subscribe to the channel Thank you so much for being here. I do hope to see you in the next one and be sure to thrive. Bye.